I've got some good news for you. This year, on Canada's Worst Driver, we're going to bring back the most frightening people we've ever had on the show. Now, if you're a fan of the show, you probably know exactly who I'm talking about. I am talking about these nine people. None of these folks ever showed enough talent behind the wheel to graduate from the Driver Rehabilitation Center. So this year, what we're going to do is we're going to bring them all back. We're going to pit them against each other in a massive showdown. And once and for all, we will learn which one of them, well, has the least skill. This is something you've been asking us to do for years and we're finally going to do it. But before we do do it, let's spend the next hour reminding ourselves why these nine hapless motorists are in the running for the most embarrassing title we've ever handed out. <laughs> Canada's worst driver ever. Canada's worst driver has been on the air for eight complete seasons. In that time, the 64 most atrocious drivers in the nation have passed through the gates of the Driver Rehabilitation Center. Over the years, we've had 15 driving experts. We've been situated in six different locations. And we've seriously injured over 50 cars. We're especially sorry about the Camaro. And I should apologize for the Mini Cooper, too. And let's not talk about the Rolls Royce. Of the 64 people that passed through our gates, some of them were beautiful success stories. Yes, yes! But some of them, specifically these nine people, Drug. have made my once shiny hair turn a skunky gray. Oh. And the yearly events that made my hair turn color weren't the endless arrays of unmitigated disasters at the rehab center. Get ya. Hey, 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 hey! They were the public drives that ended every season. Watch out for Grandma. You see, to determine who gets our unwanted trophy every year, the final show of each season ends with the worst drivers of that year taking me for a spin on public roads. And that's what we're going to reminisce about today. Mm, you're stopping on the highway. Over the next hour, we'll relive the public drives that I took with the nominees for Canada's Worst Driver Ever. I'm talking about season eight's Kevin. That's a red light. Oh. Season seven's Sly. Also from season seven, we'll be looking at Shirley's public run. It's one, one way. way. Then, of course, there's Dale from season six. I'm surprised I haven't killed anybody. And who could forget Angelina from season five? Also on the worst ever list is Shelby from season three. There's pedestrians. Whoops. Michael from season two. Watch that lane. What which? That lane. And one of the sweetest people you'll ever meet, Henrietta, also from season two. There's no left turn 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Well, it's not 7 p.m. And it all started with this guy. Chris Ferguson was the very first person to ever be named Canada's worst driver. I feel way too anxious and stressed with, with driving a car. When Chris drove a car with me in Montreal at the end of season one, one of the first things he did was get accidentally off course. This is gonna be tricky. And he couldn't figure out how to get back on course. Not good. Mm. Yeah, you might wanna check your blind spot before you start making the turns. Yeah. Especially oh, that was a cop. cop. Especially into a cop. 
Chris eventually turned into a bus terminal to get turned around. Instead of pulling a quick U-turn, though, Chris went in to explore. Oh, but there's a giant do not enter sign that says, unless you're a bus, don't come in here that you just drove under. Oh. All Chris had to do was drive straight through the bus terminal, but he did a three-point turn, which led to a showdown. Um, okay, that was curious. Why, why would you do that, baby? Probably should have followed around, seeing as this is one way, and here comes a bus. Okay, get ready for excitement. Chris treated this exciting moment as if it were a game of chicken, and luckily the bus stopped because he didn't. When he got back on the road, Chris's wife noticed an amber light and tried to warn him, <clears throat> but Chris didn't understand what <clears throat> meant. Okay, man, you're blowing a red light. You just blew through a red light. Oh, crud. Yeah, that's not good, Chris. When Chris got to the final turn, he cut off a driver who gestured at us. Sorry. And I don't think he was saying Chris was number one. And that's the story of how Chris became the first person ever to hear these words. And now it is my duty to say, you <laughs> are Canada's worst driver. Come on, buddy, I'll walk you out of here. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> After Chris was named Canada's worst driver, I thought that was going to be it for the whole show. I mean, how many worst drivers can one country have? Well, lots, apparently. And the second Canada's worst driver we had was this lovely woman, Henrietta. Even after dozens of lessons and challenges in our rehab center, Henrietta still got really nauseous whenever she took the wheel. I'm feeling like I'm gonna vomit, Andy. Andy was in a van following Henrietta's smart car during her final drive in Toronto. All right, you got into the crosswalk yeah, here. Dude. I see that, yes. She doesn't like driving in traffic at all, so she's really, really nervous. At the next intersection, her nervousness made her so apprehensive, she waited until... And it's red light. Almost... Go, 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 you're in the middle of an intersection. Don't stay there. Running that red light was semi-understandable. But not the next one. Look up, look up. You're right up there, Henry, and it says no left turn, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Well, it's not 7 p.m. Whoa, that's a red light. We're turning left on a red light. Get out of here. Go, 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 go. Get out of here. Go, go, go. Well, the cops will get me. There's the cop right there, and he let us go. I told you to be a wild ride with me. It's okay. I like wildness. But what happened next was too wild. Okay, what's wrong now? You're into the lane of oncoming traffic. You see this yellow line in front of us? That symbolizes the middle of the road. You don't want to be on the left of that line. But that cop is watching me. Mm. Yes, he is. That's that same cop we've impressed before. With oh, him. Andrew, I want to quit this. Saying that she wanted to quit was something that Henrietta did a lot in rehab. I think I should quit. She's letting me go. I want out of this Jeep. I hate this. I want to quit this right now. But Henrietta never quit. Even when she said this, I'm staying right here, and I'm not doing nothing else. Henrietta still went on to finish. So, when Henrietta said she wanted to quit her Toronto drive, <gasps> I didn't take her seriously. But I should have. Oh, look, look at up. that. Look yes, up. I see it now. It's too late. I was watching that cab go across there. I know it's awful. I'm doing awful. Henrietta was doing so awful that in hindsight, I should have taken her off the road. He's scared. I'm all right. But my own fear prevented me from realizing that Henrietta was even more afraid than I was. Okay. Henrietta, did you hear the instruction? I want you to follow it around going southbound. To go southbound, Henrietta needed to change lanes. But instead of doing that... Left lane, get into left lane and... Uh... She changed her emotional state. We're gonna pull over then as soon as you want. Take the first right when you get out of here. Turn right here. We're gonna get off of this and we're gonna stop. Henrietta stopped to wait for the traffic, but when it moved, she didn't. Oh, I can't shoot this. It's okay. It's okay. Just creep it forward and we're gonna get off the road. You're totally fine, Henrietta. You shown great courage. It's all right. Henrietta mustered up the courage to make it around the corner. But even parked, she was still unsafe. Watch your door, watch your door. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. 
Let's just sit. Just sit, Henry. You're okay. Do you want to get in here, Andy? Okay. Relax. It's gonna trouble me. Trouble me. It was all over, but now Henrietta's coming back to see if she is Canada's worst driver ever. Oh my God, I can laugh now. It's not funny when you're behind that wheel. When we come back, I'll remind you why Michael no boy haunted me. and Shelby Ooh. are also in the running to be Canada's worst driver ever. Welcome back to a special presentation that we're calling Canada's Worst Driver Ever. This year, when the Driver Rehabilitation Center opens its doors for our ninth season, we're gonna be having a showdown amongst our most abysmal motorists of all time to see which one of them is the worst ever. And perhaps it's Michael. I'm sure you remember Michael. Back in season two, he told us that becoming a legal driver is not something that happened quickly. It took me nine times to get my license. Perhaps Michael shouldn't even have a license. When he drove with me in Toronto. That's correct, sir. He almost immediately drifted into the middle of an intersection, then continued through when the light was red. I don't want to do that a lot. When Michael had to make a U-turn on Sedina, he didn't realize that this symbol represents a U-turn lane. Making a U-turn on a left turn arrow is illegal. So how do you make a U-turn on Spadina? Carefully. Almost a kilometer north, Michael carefully did a U-turn, but... Okay, that was extraordinarily illegal, so I'm not going to count that as your U-turn on Spadina. Soon after that, Michael started a left turn so late, the pedestrians made him stop in the oncoming traffic lane. Oh, please move forward out of that guy's lane. Just I'm get, just, just an inch what forward. Come on. No point honking me. After that, Michael missed the U-turn lane again. Looking for an opportunity to make a U-turn. And then he wound up in a left turn lane where he had to wait for the signal. But when the signal came on... You're on. Yep. He only drove a meter. That's not going to impress anybody behind us, that there was a left turn signal and you didn't turn. It doesn't impress me either. So there's your light, man. Go, take it, take it, take it. Come on. Ten minutes after that, Michael got off course again. Well, at least this should be a fairly straightforward recovery. It should have been straightforward, but Michael's next move was stopping diagonally in a crosswalk. We now have a clear space to stop blocking the crosswalk. Remember how I told you my hair has been turning gray? This parked car is one of the reasons. When Michael tried to pull around it, he did so without looking. Watch that other lane, watch that lane. What, which? That lane, you were turning into that lane, weren't you? I was just starting to, just yeah. barely. That lane was occupied. You don't merge with solid objects, Michael. That's Eric, the guy who nominated Michael as Canada's worst driver in the first place. I blew it. Now let's get Eric's opinion. Primus, you missed six turn points. Mm -hmm. Secondus, you were defensive driving to the point where you were becoming dangerous. Tertius, attempting to merge with a solid object, i.e. the other car in the other lane, bad. Will Michael be named Canada's worst driver ever this season? We'll soon find out. So far, the nominees for Canada's worst driver ever that you've met have been Chris and Henrietta and Michael and now... Now it's time to introduce you to my favorite person who's ever walked through the doors of the Driver Rehab Center. Shelby! When we met Shelby, he was an absolutely pathetic driver. And he knew it. I drive like a grandpa. You can speed up, but you're still not doing 50 yet. I don't want to do 50. What are you doing? Making sure I can get through the intersection. Before getting his driver's license at age 26, Shelby had never driven anything. Oh man! Not even a bicycle! So, at our rehab center, we welded training wheels to an adult bike, and Shelby's vehicular education really began. Oh, don't do that! Don't do that! Don't do that! Don't do that! You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. When Shelby got the hang of driving with training wheels, 
It was time for step two. My training wheels are off. Took me forever, but I got them off. Shelby had no idea how to keep his weight above the bike. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> and after an hour, I still didn't feel comfortable leaving him alone. Pedal more. Pedal more. Pedal more. Shelby, we're riding the bike, buddy. Yeah. We're riding the bike, Shelby. Paddle. Wait. Keep pedaling, man. Yeah. Yeah. You got it, buddy. Slow down. Slow down. There were a lot of near mishaps, and Shelby's shirt did get ruined. Pedal, 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 pedal. But he persisted and eventually got in the groove of bike riding. Pedal, pedal. Shelby, you know how to ride a bike. Ah, yes. Big. Yes. Big day at the office. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Feet on the pedals. You got it, man. You got it. And All the braking right. and everything. Wicked. All right. Dun, 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 dun. I did it. Learning to ride a bike took Shelby just over two hours. Or 30 years. Depending on how you look at it. In season three, the final public drive was designed to mimic an Ontario driver's license test. And for the test, participants drove my personal truck. I am really not thrilled about driving Andrew's vehicle. That kind of stunned me that he would actually give me his personal vehicle to risk out on the roads. On an Ontario driver's license test, you'll be given an automatic failure if you're unable to perform certain tasks. The first one of those tasks we tested Shelby on was merging onto the highway. And that's a real driver's merge there. That's a good one. When he got off the highway, Shelby made some mistakes that don't result in an automatic failure. Now you're at a green light doing nothing. You do something. He stopped at a green light and went at a stop sign. You know at a stop sign you want to stop until there's yeah. no traffic coming, hey? Yeah. Why aren't you turning left now, though? Oh. Don't slow down for a green light. Okay. And I've got to turn. Okay. There's pedestrians! Uh, whoops. That mistake would have been an automatic failure. Why did you turn left there? Because it was a turn lane and I had a green light. Other mistakes that would have resulted in an automatic failure included... Going backwards when there's a green light in front of you. Yeah. I thought he might need to back up. Reversing on a green light and turning right when signs say not to. See that sign over there? What does that say? Oh, no right turn. Once my head had sprouted a few more hundred gray hairs, we reached the checkered flag. All right, we're almost parked. When he got parked, Shelby was oblivious to the obvious. Okay, I'll so did I pass? No. No? Tag, man. When we come back, ah! I'll reintroduce you to the worst driver we've ever had at our rehab center, statistically speaking. Ah! There's no wheel! I don't even think there's a rim! When Angelina drove me in Toronto... You're having a panic attack? Oh, you having a panic attack? We're going to stop right away. I don't know who had more panic attacks, me or her. Fans of our show all have their own opinion about who is Canada's worst driver ever. But if you want my opinion, it's this woman right here. Angelina from Sudbury. She was like a character out of a movie. But when she comes back again this year to compete against the most abysmal motorists we've ever had on our show, will she wind up with the official title of Canada's worst driver ever? Only time will tell. Oh! Wow! Oh, no! When we met Angelina in season five, she was always racing to do her makeup, which always needed redoing because... I'm freaking out! She was always crying. I've never been on this road in my life. In rehab... Oh! Oh! Ah! Angelina failed her quiz oh, 22 out of 23 challenges. Ah. Our lowest success rate ever. Oh, panic attack.
tag, man. When Angelina drove me in public, panic was a real concern. I'm scared. I'm scared. Oh, I'm really scared. Of what? I don't know. When drivers are scared... So nervous. Don't cry, don't cry. I'm scared, too. If we cry, we're gonna stop, because there's no sense in driving and crying. But I was crying when I'm walking. This drive did not have to happen, but Angelina insisted on continuing. Angelina's first instruction was to go left onto Young Street. But Angelina couldn't handle it. I can't think I'm having a panic attack. Oh, you having a panic attack? We're going to stop right away. We can't cry and drive on Young Street. I won't cry, stop. I won't cry. What do you do when you have a stress attack? I take a Xanax and I prescribe them. Angelina would take that drug. Only when I feel anxiety. But on this day, she hadn't taken any medication. I don't know why I'm upset. Are these four lanes or two lanes? These ones. These ones are two. If you've been prescribed a medication, it's important to use it the way it's been prescribed. So if she's been told that she needs to take this whenever she feels anxious, that's what she needs to do. And she did. Five minutes after swallowing the pill... And I just pull straight up. Angelina convinced me she was good to go. But she wasn't. I don't want to hit Okay, we're going to pull over again right away. We're going to pull over again right away. Stop. Okay, I won't cry, I won't cry. I won't cry, I promise. Promise, shmamas. I made her pull over. Should you do this? <laughs> yeah. How long does it take for the Xanax to kick in? 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Should we just wait? Maybe. There was no maybe about it. We waited. Oh, why I'm so emotional. You're always this emotional, aren't you? Yeah. While we waited, I wanted Angelina to observe the traffic that she wanted to be a part of. Bicycle, cab driver, jaywalker. I'm really scared I'm gonna hit somebody. That's the most thing I'm scared of, is that I'm gonna hit somebody. 10 minutes after Angelina parked. Should I go now? Nope, you should not. I wanted to stay parked. But after another 10 minutes... Are you able to do this? Yeah. Angelina insisted she was ready to go. Can I go? Can I go? Oh, my goodness. Here we go. So we're on Wellesley, okay? Mm. We're looking for one called Queen's Park Crescent. On Queen's Park Crescent... I'm scared. Angelina had me seriously scared. Oh! Oh, my... Ah! Too many people everywhere. Am oh. I going over the speed limit? You tell me. It says 40 right there. Are you? Yes, you are. You're doing 60 and a 40. Oh, my God. I'm so scared. Ah! Is that Xanax kicking in? Yeah. I feel like crying. Just a few minutes later... Oh, I suck at this. Angelina made an illegal turn... Then she changed lanes in an intersection. I know this is illegal. And then the tears flowed again. Please stop. Please stop. Please. Let's stop. Please stop. The only way Angelina will ever be safe so is if she gives up her license. I don't want to give away my license. I mean, we can't just let you go home driving like this. What are you going to do? I'm going to encourage you to stop driving. No, I'm not. Are you going to make me the worst driver? Oh, we made her the worst driver, all right. I honestly don't think you should drive. I'm driving. And with that, Angelina did start driving again. Oh, sorry. Are you okay? I so much of people judging me. We're in the business of judging people. And when Angelina comes back to rehab this year, she could be judged Canada's worst driver ever. I'll pull over for yeah, you. Good. I'm so embarrassed. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. We're going to pull up right here and stop. Angelina finished season five by hopping the curb 
and then breaking down. That's Sorry. Fine. That's, fine. That's fine. All this is overwhelming. That's why I seem to be an idiot. But I can drive. When we come back... What's the worst that can happen? I'll reintroduce you to two women who don't know which side of a yellow line to be on. And now you're in the oncoming traffic lane. Dale and Shirley. Oh, this is disastrous. Remember how, just before the break, I explained to you that this year on Canada's Worst Driver, we're going to round up all of the lousiest license holders we've ever had on the show, and we're going to make them compete against one another to see which of them is deserving of the title Canada's Worst Driver Ever. And you remember that I predicted that that unwanted award would go to this woman right here, Angelina. Well, I might be wrong about that, actually, because perhaps Canada's Worst Driver ever is this woman, Dale, from season six. Don't tell me how to drive. When Dale drove me in public at the end of season six, I was deathly nervous, but she wasn't. What's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that can happen? Are you serious? No, I meant like what, no, I'm gonna be very careful. I mean, no, I won't kill you. Excellent. To start, Dale wanted to back up. Oh, uh, you got, no, you'll hit that thing if you back up. What thing? There's a sign right behind you. The legs of the oh, sign okay, are sticking all right. Up. All right, Dale, take care of us. Within five minutes of driving through beautiful Niagara Falls, Dale got in a left turn lane and then drove straight through it. And now you're in the oncoming traffic lane. At the next major intersection, Dale was well behind the stop line when the light turned yellow. And she was still in the intersection when the light turned red. Going through a yellow. If you're able to stop at a yellow, you're legally bound to stop. Okay, all right. Do you That's know that? something I didn't know. I didn't know you that. You didn't know that? No. Dale also didn't know which way was left. 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 Left, Dale. Okay, you're in the right turn lane now. Oh. And she didn't know who has the right of way when she wants to turn left at a stop sign. Who has the right of way, Dale? Her or you? Me. And with that, Dale pushed illegally into the intersection. See how we're in the oncoming traffic lane? Yeah. To determine the right of way, just remember, the driver to the right always has the right. There was a blue van to Dale's right, so it had the right of way. That's super dangerous, Dale. Yeah, you're right. I'm surprised I haven't killed anybody. Dale's next instruction was to go straight. Now, in this lane, we're gonna go straight, is that correct? Well, we're in the middle lane. Okay. This is a right turn lane, I'm pretty sure. It was illegal for Dale to drive straight out of that lane. It was also illegal for her to go underneath a red light. And it was illegal for her to change lanes without signaling. But that's what she did. When you change lanes like that, you have to signal. You're that. absolutely right. Then Dale did this. Now you're in two lanes at once. And then she did this. And so now we're driving in the wrong lane into oncoming traffic, OK? Oh, my gosh. When Dale got on the highway, she illegally crossed white solid lines, then went 20K over the limit. How fast are you going? I'm going about almost 50. You think you're doing, doing 50? I'm going. Dale, you're going 70. See the oh. speedometer? Oh, I'm looking at, oh, OK. You've been looking at the wrong dial. Yeah, I have. At the final intersection, even my gray hairs got grayer. Back where we We're back where we started. When we started this special episode, I introduced you to Chris, and then to Henrietta, then Michael, then Shelby, 
And then, Angelina. Together with Dale, they represent the worst drivers we ever met during our first six seasons of production. During the first six seasons of our show, several of the people who were named Canada's worst driver weren't safe behind the wheel just because, well, they didn't have enough time to practice, really. Then we got to season seven when... Shirley was named Canada's worst driver, and she certainly had enough time to practice. The horse and buggy was still on the road for a number of years after I got my driver license. When Shirley drove me in Hamilton, Ontario, she didn't have a horse and buggy, but we're gonna go out here. She did have a powerful Mustang from the 1960s, which she almost immediately stopped across the white stopping line. See where you're parked? Yes. Illegal. Oh, did I ever go over it? When Shirley went again, she turned from the far left lane into the far right lane. Drifting across lanes while turning would have cost her 110 bucks had she been caught. You must turn into the into closest the lane. lane. Shirley then got herself into a left turn lane. She I want to go left. Okay, perfect. But she was also next to a left turn lane. And that confused her so much that when the left turn arrow came on, she did nothing. You're at a green light right now. Now, so I can't. Shirley just can't think fast under pressure. And on this day, she sat still until the arrow turned amber. And then she went straight. Doing nothing at a green light is one violation. And going straight through a turning lane is another. When drivers get off course on these public exams with me, it's up to them to get back on course. And that's what Shirley was doing when she made this mistake. You see that big arrow there? That means one, one way. way. And wouldn't you know it, a police officer saw her. Luckily though, he let her off with a warning. Thank you very much, officer. Appreciate it. Oh, this is disastrous. Soon after that, Shirley was again confused about being in a left turn lane that was beside a left turn lane. I gotta do something because there's a green arrow. When Shirley duplicated her earlier mistake of driving straight through a turning lane, I told her to stop doing that. Okay, Andrew, That's these no are good. wonderful tips. Then I gave Shirley one more wonderful tip. Never drive on the left side of a yellow line! And that's crossing a yellow line. See that yellow line that we're on right now? You want to have that on the other side, Shirley. Shirley, turn over, 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 over now. You're on a blind hill. Holy Oh, man. this was a two-way. When we come back... A double yellow line. I've never seen one of those in my life. I'll show you the conclusion of Shirley's public drive. And I'll reintroduce you to Sly. This is a red light, Sly. Yeah, I know. It's a big red light. This year on Canada's Worst Driver, we're going to be bringing back the most appalling motorists we've had to determine which one of them is Canada's Worst Driver ever. Now, just before the break, I was reminding you about the time that I was being driven in public oh, by Shirley. And I wasn't just being driven in public, I was being driven on the wrong side of the road in public. And that's crossing a yellow line. See that yellow line that we're on right now? You want to have that on the other side, Shirley? Shirley, turn over, 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 over now. You're on a blind hill. Holy Oh, this man. was a two-way. Being on the wrong side of a two-way street cost me about another thousand gray hairs. Always have to stay to the right of the double yellow lines. Stay to the right of them. Oh yes, a double yellow line is the deadliest road marking ever. Okay, I've it... never seen one of those in my life. A double yellow line? No, never. Wow. I'll never forget that. Shirley saw her light turn amber. I gotta stop. So she stopped in a crosswalk. 
See, this thing we're in here is called a pedestrian crossway. When the light turned green, Shirley remained in the pedestrian crosswalk and didn't move again until it's red now. And once again, you turned into two lanes at once. Yeah. At that point, I suggested stopping this drive. Yeah, I'm just, nerves are gone. Okay, then pull over, because I don't want to drive with somebody whose nerves are gone. No, they're not really. My nerves were about to get really tested. After Shirley stopped in another crosswalk... You see that orange light that you just passed? It was time to head for the highway. Six lanes of highway traffic, wait for us. Headed for that highway traffic, Shirley was showing signs of not being ready. What does this sign mean right there? There's gotta be, I don't know. It means two lanes are gonna become one. This is a merge situation, do not stop. Shirley shoulder checked repeatedly, but got spooked by a car that was two lanes over. He's coming on so fast. Damn straight, he's coming on fast where he's on a highway. Then Shirley added to my gray hair collection by hitting the brakes. You can't stop in a merge lane. I was all set there till he pulled in too fast. 30 seconds later, Shirley was still driving only 50k an hour. Then 60. Now you're going at 70 kilometers an hour. You want to be going a little bit faster. We're on the highway. Everybody's flying past us. Shirley was going so slow that when she tried to merge into the slow lane, I can't get in it. See, they're just coming at me. Eventually, the lane that Shirley was in led her to an exit that she didn't want. And what happened next could have killed us. Mm, you're stopping on the highway. Go, 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 go. I try to keep my cool on these drives. Mercifully, Shirley did manage to get off the highway. And after she ran one final red light... That happened? was yellow. She did bring me home. Well, I wasn't good at that. Not good was the understatement of the century. No, I... Totally understand this is, I'd be killed if I was alone. I could be very easily killed. The next nominee for Canada's worst driver ever is... Sly. Back when we met this Albertan, he was a professional delivery driver. I'm gonna say that again, just so it sinks in. Okay, here we go. Sly was a professional delivery driver. Order's been picked up. A professional delivery driver who'd recently received three tickets for speeding. In a 30 zone. In a 30 zone. In a 30 zone. So that sounds like a school zone? Uh, yeah. Sly could also have been ticketed for driving with a cell phone. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll still pick up the girls. And if driving while eating were a ticketable offense, Sly would owe about a million dollars. When Sly drove me in public... What's this one? He almost immediately went through a red light. I this know. is a red light, Sly. Yeah, I It's know. a big red light. Keep my eyes open for Wilson. Looking for Wilson Street, Sly almost went through another red light. When Sly got on the highway, he became the focus of a photographer's attention. Look at that guy taking a picture of us with his cell phone while he's driving. Is he dri How? He was taking a picture. How? How do people do this? It's crazy. But you used to do that crazy stuff before coming to rehab. You'd have your phone in one hand, touching it, oh, looking yeah, at yeah, it. Oh, yeah, that's true. It was at that point that I made Sly promise me that he would become exclusively a two-handed driver. Promise me you'll never eat a sandwich while driving again. Yeah, I know I won't. You'll never use your cell phone while driving again. Uh, no. You'll never touch your GPS while driving well, again. Well, listen to it. That's why they have the voice by voice. When we come back, I'll reintroduce you to Canada's worst driver from season eight, Kevin. Stop, stop, stop. What are you doing, man?
Hey, if you're just joining us, we've been spending the last hour going over the nominees for our new upcoming series, Canada's Worst Driver Ever. And there's only one more nominee to introduce you to. Hey, look at that. As luck would have it, here he comes now. It's Kevin. I'm permanently blind in the right eye. Permanently blind? Yes. Kevin has almost no peripheral vision on his right side. I see it. But his lack of peripheral vision isn't enough to disqualify him from driving in Canada. When Kevin drove me in Hamilton, Ontario, though, I was wishing his lack of peripheral vision had disqualified him as a driver because the man never turned his head to compensate for his blind side. Do you see me moving at all? No. At times, it seemed like Kevin didn't see anything at all. Did you just go right through a stop sign without stopping? I didn't see a stop sign. Well, it was that big octagonal red thing. The rectangular white thing that next appeared in front of Kevin said that he could not turn right on this red light. Okay, looks like I'm safe to go. But somehow Kevin managed to miss this obvious sign, and he managed to miss the entire next red light. Buddy, buddy, what? do you see that red light? No, I did not. How did you not see that red light? Kevin didn't see these pedestrians. Ah, uh, anyway. no, I did Okay, now you did not see them, did you? No, I did not. And he didn't see a lane divider he straddled. I'm in one lane. No, my friend. And he didn't see the traffic overtaking him on his left. Oh, that's whoa, whoa. Work. Okay, I'm gonna make this turn here. You're not in the turn lane. And worst of all, Kevin doesn't see the point of being in the turning lane when he wants to turn. Not in the turning lane? You're not in the turning lane. Gray hairs, people. Gray hairs. Now stop, stop, stop. What are you doing, man? What does this guy see? So I have to go over here, right? I'm confused here. You sure are. You're stopped in the middle of a road. I'll just go this way. Where are you going now? That's the oncoming traffic lane, my friend. I think Kevin should quit driving. That's a red light. Oh. Seriously, should you drive? I'd be lying if I said yes, but I really don't want to say no either. The identity of Canada's worst driver ever will be revealed eight episodes from now. In order for our experts to decide who most deserves that unwanted title, the nine nominees will be at our rehabilitation center, getting thoroughly tested in a series of 22 driving challenges. That was scary. At the rehab center, we'll test them on steering and we'll quiz them on their knowledge of road rules. Um. When that's done, we'll find out if any of them know where their wheels are. Uh oh. What did I do? To avoid being named Canada's worst driver ever, the nominees will have to show us they now know how to reverse. I'm curious as to what. I want to know what I did wrong there. And that they know how to parallel park. It's better. And that they know how to prevent spinning out of control. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my god. Will any of these folks find redemption as a graduate of our rehabilitation center? And more importantly, which one of them will end up with the embarrassing title, Canada's worst driver ever? This is so depressing. Well, there you have it. Those are the nine nominees for the nation's most embarrassing motoring award of all time. Which one of them is going to have to go home with our unwanted title? I don't know. All I know is I'm going to be lucky if I survive Canada's worst driver ever.